So what's going on with Tesla Solar these days? We've been talking a lot about the company's energy division recently, but the conversation always centers around big battery storage systems. It's been a while since we really dug deep into the solar power generation side of Tesla's business, and admittedly, that's a lot to do with the fact that things aren't going so great over there. It's pretty hard to sugarcoat a lot of the problems that have been coming up lately, and now everything is being made worse by a surprise solar panel cash grab from the state of California, who were supposed to be the green energy champions, but just turned out to be a bunch of assholes. So let's talk about where Tesla Solar is at going into 2022, the struggles they face, and how they might go about turning things around in the future. Okay, so the heart of the Tesla Solar Pitch is a product that looks like a regular shingled or tiled roof, but actually contains photovoltaic solar cells, which would eliminate the need to have a roofing job plus solar panel installation on top. Tesla would just roll both jobs into one and therefore deliver the most cost-effective solar solution while also maintaining the original look of the house and not broadcasting to the neighbors that you're a big nerd with a solar powered house. And on top of all that, the Tesla roof tiles would be specially engineered to be more durable and long lasting than regular shingles and at least as good, if not better, than premium slate tile roofing. At least that was the pitch that Elon Musk made to Tesla investors at the time that he proposed the acquisition of a company called Solar City. This was a very bold move from Elon for a number of reasons. Thing one, the revolutionary solar roof tile that Elon was holding up during his presentation to Tesla stockholders was a non-functioning dummy tile. It was just a prop with no ability to function either as a solar panel or a roof tile. Elon had a great idea, but was still short on engineering specifics. This was not the first time or the last time Elon Musk would put the cart before the horse, but so far it's been working out great for him. So who's to argue? Thing two, Solar City was a company that just happened to be founded by two of Elon Musk's cousins, who were pretty much relying on their much smarter and more business savvy relative to help direct the company. Elon had a significant horse in the race from a personal perspective. Thing three, Solar City was in dire straits financially preceding the Tesla deal, and they were only hanging on for as long as they did because Elon Musk moved $90 million out of SpaceX and put it into Solar City. This was done in the form of selling bonds in Solar City to SpaceX. There was actually three of these sales made, totaling around $255 million, but the first couple managed to fly under the radar. The idea of these bond sales was that the money would pay for Solar City installations right now, and in 15 years, the bonds would be paid back to SpaceX with 4.4% interest. So why did Solar City need to borrow all of this money? Well, they had this weird, stupid business model of leasing, or in other words, renting solar panels to customers. The company would come and install a solar system on your roof at no cost, and then you would just pay them a monthly fee to use it. There are a couple of good things going for the idea. The take rate will be much higher if people don't have to pay the full cost up front. Not everyone has a big savings account, and that's fine. You can still go green and just pay it off month by month. This is also good for the company in the sense that they remain the owners of all the solar panels and therefore Solar City themselves receive all of the green energy tax credits and rebates, not the homeowner. Of course, the obvious downside there is that Solar City is taking on massive expenses with the purchase of materials and installation costs, and then they only receive small streams of revenue in return that will take years to actually cover the initial cost. This is the reason that Elon Musk was in court last year being sued by a group of Tesla shareholders who were still rattled over the Solar City acquisition five years later. We reported on the trial a few times last summer. This was the one where Elon called the prosecuting lawyer a bad human being who was mentored by criminals. Elon was also known to drag out the proceedings by telling an extended anecdote every time he was asked a question. Elon refused to give a yes or no answer throughout the entire trial. As far as I can tell, there has yet to be a ruling in that case. 
Anyway, that's the story of how Tesla came to be in the solar panel business. And most of you probably already know that the solar roof tile did eventually get invented for real and has been installed on hundreds of houses over the past couple of years. But the rollout of the solar roof was not the end of the rocky road for Tesla Solar. Deployment numbers for Solar City peaked in 2017 and actually fell off dramatically following the Tesla acquisition, which again is not surprising as Tesla was more focused on marketing their very expensive solar roof tile system and they also expected customers to pay the full price for the product up front. Much different business model. The change in ownership to Tesla also came with a much reduced sales pressure. While SolarCity has been hyper-aggressive with their marketing tactics that included things like door-to-door -door salesmen, Tesla don't really believe in advertising. So even looking at their most recent available numbers from 2021, Tesla Solar is still only doing about half the volume of installations that SolarCity was running at their peak, which again is not necessarily a bad thing. Work smarter, not harder is a famous saying in business for a reason. Except Tesla wasn't exactly working smarter with their solar roof ventures. And that came to a head in the spring of 2021 when we had a very bad scene around unexpected price increases. Basically, the company started jacking up prices on customer quotes that had already been signed off on. Now, of course, a quote is a quote. It's not a guarantee. So a bit of deviation can probably be tolerated, but Tesla was making huge price adjustments, increasing the cost by 50% or more, and in some cases, more than double, which in a project of this scale amounts to tens of thousands of dollars in additional costs to the homeowner. Folks were pissed off, and rightly so in many cases. Elon chalked this up to what he called significant mistakes in assessing the difficulty of certain roofs though he stressed that the demand for solar roofs still far exceeded the company's ability to supply and install them. And a lot of the reason for this is the increased complexity of a Tesla solar roof. It's a marvel of engineering genius, really, but it also takes much longer to install than a traditional shingle roof. Now we're talking a week or more of labor versus a couple of days. And since each roof is customized, modular, prefabricated systems, all of the parts need to be constructed in a factory first and then packed up and shipped to the worksite. Your contractor can't just pick up a few cases of Tesla tiles at Home Depot on the way to do the job. Anyways, this all resulted in a class action lawsuit by the folks who had already signed contracts for their solar roof prior to the April price increase, which was an obvious step for them to take and should have come as a surprise to no one. By September 2021, Tesla had agreed to settle and return those customers to their original pricing. Now here's something we hardly ever talk about. We may have never even mentioned this factory before, but it does exist. Giga Buffalo. There is a Tesla factory in New York State. Now, it's not a real Tesla Giga factory like the new one in Austin, Texas, or even the older one in Nevada. This Buffalo factory was inherited as part of the Solar City acquisition deal. But along with it came a deal with the state of New York to create a certain number of jobs and maintain a level of investment in the region. In exchange, the state invested $950 million in the project. Tesla's original plan here was to use the factory to build solar panels. But that didn't really pan out the way they had expected due to the significant drop off in customers. Then Tesla sprung a deal with Panasonic to produce solar modules at the factory, but that didn't last either. Now they are using the Buffalo location for a combination of jobs that include making solar roof tiles, building supercharger stations, and even doing data management and video labeling for the autopilot self-driving program. With all of this together, Tesla just barely managed to reach their obligations to the state government and avoid having to pay a $40 million penalty. The deal was that they had to be employing at least 1,460 full-time staff in Buffalo by December 31st, 2021, and the company managed to reach 1,536 full-time employees by mid-November. Not that it really matters, it's just a little interesting side story. So, with all of that said, does 2022 hold a positive outlook for Tesla Solar? Nah, not really. 
not at the moment at least. It's not even anything to do with Tesla themselves. I do believe that once Giga Austin gets up and running and the company can get on top of their vehicle production and stop stretching themselves so thin, then a lot of the problems with the solar roof are going to sort themselves out. But it's the goddamn state of California that has decided to go ahead and ruin everything. This is something we first heard about in mid-December and is threatening to move forward now in January. The California Public Utilities Commission is proposing a new net metering structure that includes something called a grid access fee of $8 per kilowatt of installed solar per month. So if you have a rooftop system that generates 5 kilowatts of electricity, which is fairly average for a small system, then you're paying the state 40 bucks a month just to own the panels. And in addition to other fees, that could add up to between $50 and $80 per month to the electric bill of a home solar customer. If adopted, this would be the highest solar fee anywhere in America, including states that are known to be hostile to renewable energy. In addition, the proposal would reduce the value of bill credits for solar energy sent to the grid by about 80%. So you would get basically nothing in exchange for sending your excess solar power back into the utility company. California says that the fees collected would be used to fund the state electrical grid, which I get. It's no secret that the California power grid is an unstable pile of shit, but trying to take advantage of solar panel owners to help pay to fix it is pretty baffling. People who choose to buy home solar actually reduce their reliance on local utilities and thereby reduce the stress on the community power grid. They're helping fix the problem at their own expense. You would think that would be encouraged. And it's ironic because the state of California does offer solar incentives in the form of tax credits and rebates. So they'll help you install the panels with rebates, then they take the money back again in the form of extra fees, and then they use those fees to try and fix the shitty electrical grid that forced you to buy the solar panels in the first place. Having said all that, I do honestly believe that home-based or at least community-based solar energy is the future. It's just a question of how long that's going to take to come together. But let us know how you see things going. Maybe there are more progressive things happening where you live, and we'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.